Hi, I'm Lisa. How do you feel about your writing skills in English? Good spoken English is very important, but writing is also very important. And good writing means good punctuation. For many years, I used to teach academic writing classes at Santa Monica College. One of the main things that my students struggled with was using the comma correctly. I will give you a test which will check your knowledge of the usage of the comma in English. And why do I say in English? Because comma rules can be different in different languages. If your native language is not English, maybe you learned different rules about the comma. And if you are a native speaker of English, this video will help you also. I know that some native speakers watch my videos. This is an opportunity for you to review those rules that you learned maybe in high school a long time ago. Maybe you forgot some of these rules. Let me tell you about how this test will work. For each question, you will see two sentences, sentence A and sentence B. Sentence A has the commas and sentence B does not. And I want you to decide which one is correct, A or B. I will give you some time to think and then I will give you the answer and I will teach you the rule. Anytime you would like to skip to the next question, you can follow the time markers that I wrote below. That way, if you don't want to listen to the whole explanation, you don't have to. Okay, let's look at the first sentence. The students who study hard for the test will get an A. Which one is correct? Do we need the two commas or not? What do you think? Is it A or B? The correct answer is B, no commas. Let me teach you the rule. Who study for the test is called a relative clause. We have two different types of relative clauses. We have restrictive relative clauses and non-restrictive relative clauses. When a relative clause is restrictive, that means it is essential to the meaning of the sentence. So let's take out who study hard for the test. And now the sentence is, the students will get an A. Has the meaning changed? Yes, it has. Not all students will get an A. Only the students who study hard for the test will get an A. Therefore, the relative clause is essential to the meaning and that's considered a restrictive relative clause. In that case, we do not use commas. And relative clauses begin with the following words that are called relative pronouns. Who, whose, whom, that, and which. Let's look at question number two. It's similar to question number one. Which one is correct, A or B? My uncle, who is a dentist, lives in New York. Is it A or B? Commas or no commas? If we take out the relative clause, who is a dentist, and we say, my uncle lives in New York, the sentence still makes sense. So the correct answer is A. We would put those commas. However, there is an exception. What if I have two uncles? One uncle is a dentist and one uncle is a doctor. In that case, you might be confused about which uncle I'm talking about. If I want to clarify that I'm talking about the uncle who is a dentist and not the uncle who is a doctor, then we would not have the commas because now it's a restrictive relative clause. It's essential to the meaning of the sentence. You need that information to know what I'm talking about. So that means no commas with that sentence. Before we go on to the next question, I'd like to give you a few more example sentences to make sure you understand this concept. Let's look at this sentence. Los Angeles, which is a big city, has a lot of traffic. Which is a big city is just additional information in describing Los Angeles. It's just extra information. Therefore, we must have the two commas. Look at the next sentence with a relative clause. The dress that she wore last night looked beautiful on her. The information in the relative clause is essential to the meaning. The dress that she wore last night looked beautiful on her, but not all the dresses look beautiful on her. Maybe just the one that she wore last night. We need that information. I think you understand it now, right? Let's go to question number three. This example has a different rule related to commas. Which one is correct, A or B? I couldn't call you yesterday 
because I was studying for a test. Do we need a comma before the word because? That's a common question that my students have asked me in the past. Do you know the answer? Is it A or B? To keep it simple, I will explain it this way. When because is in the middle of a sentence, no comma. But now, let me explain it in grammatical terms. Let's look at the word because. Because is a subordinating conjunction. Subordinating conjunctions follow specific comma rules. Before I teach you that rule, let me give you a list of other subordinating conjunctions. After, although, as long as, before, even if, even though, if, until, when, whenever. And now let me explain to you how they work. Let's go back to our original sentence. I couldn't call you yesterday because I was studying for a test. Let's look at the first part. I couldn't call you yesterday. That's a complete sentence. That's also called an independent clause. The sentence can stand alone. It's a complete sentence. But look at the next part. Because I was studying for a test. That's not a complete sentence. That's called a dependent clause. It's dependent. It's not independent. So when we have an independent clause followed by a subordinating conjunction such as because or when or even if or after or before and then we have a dependent clause, no comma, before the subordinating conjunction. I will give you a few more examples in just a minute, but first I want you to look at question number four and tell me if you think it needs a comma. This time we change the order of the same sentence. Because I was studying for a test, I couldn't call you. Do we need a comma here? What do you think? Is it A or is it B? It's A. Yes, we do need a comma. So when the subordinating conjunction is in the beginning of a sentence, then we put a comma after the dependent clause. Let's practice that a little bit more. Let's look at these examples. Because I was hungry. After I woke up. Whenever I think about it. These are unfinished thoughts. We have something else to say after that. This is when we need a comma with the words I gave you with the subordinating conjunctions. Let's finish those sentences now. Because I was hungry, comma, I got something to eat. But what happens if we change the word order around? What if we put I got something to eat in the front? That's the independent clause. In that case, no comma. I got something to eat because I was hungry. No comma. After I woke up. What happened after I woke up? After I woke up, I made a few phone calls and replied to my messages. We need a comma there. And now let's change the word order. And let's start that sentence with, I made a few phone calls. I made a few phone calls and replied to my messages after I woke up. No comma. And the third example, whenever I think about it, that's an unfinished thought. What happens? Whenever I think about it, I get sad. We have a comma there. And of course, if we change that sentence around, no comma. I get sad whenever I think about it. I think you understand it now, right? You should learn this list because the comma rule that we just learned applies to these words. It's not a complete list, but these are the most common subordinating conjunctions. Okay. Let's look at the next question. In this question, there's a different comma rule. He likes to watch action movies and play video games. Do we need a comma before and? What do you think? Is the correct answer A or B? And is not a subordinating conjunction. It's a coordinating conjunction and they follow different comma rules. This is why comma rules can be so confusing. We have subordinating conjunctions and we have coordinating conjunctions. With a coordinating conjunction, in order to have a comma, you need two separate independent clauses. That means two separate sentences that can stand alone. He likes to watch action movies is a sentence that can stand alone. It's an independent clause. But how about the second part after and? Play video games. Is that a complete sentence? No, it's not. And because it's not a complete sentence, we should not put a comma there. 
The correct answer is B, no comma. Here is a list of the coordinating conjunctions that follow this rule. And, but, for, nor, or, yet, and so. These words follow different rules from the other list that you learned. These are coordinating conjunctions, not subordinating conjunctions. Let's look at some more examples of this. Will you buy an expensive car or an inexpensive car? Or is also a coordinating conjunction just like and. An inexpensive car is not a complete sentence. It's a dependent clause. Let's look at the next question. He speaks English very well, but he needs to work on his writing skills. Do we need a comma before but? What's the correct answer, A or B? Yes, we do need a comma because this sentence contains two independent clauses. We have the pronoun he two times in both clauses. So the previous sentence that we had, will you buy an expensive car or an inexpensive car? If we change that sentence a little bit, we can add the comma. We can say, will you buy an expensive car? comma, or will you buy an inexpensive car? Now we have two independent clauses, two complete sentences, and that's why we have a comma. There is a little exception to this rule. When both of the sentences are really short, you don't have to put a comma. For example, we sang and we danced. That's a very short sentence. In that case, you don't necessarily need a comma. Or, I was hungry, so I ate. A comma is not necessary there, even though both of those are complete sentences. How did you do on the commas test? Let me know in the comments below. And by the way, this is not a complete list of commas rules. This is just a partial list. I recommend that you learn all the rules related to commas, but not only to commas, but to all of the different punctuation marks, such as the quotation mark and the exclamation point, a colon, a semicolon, a dash, a hyphen, an asterisk, parentheses. All of these things are very important to know if you're going to be a good writer. To help you learn the punctuation rules of English, there are a couple of books that I recommend, and I put them in the description below. One of them is called The Blue Book of Grammar and Punctuation. This book is written for native speakers of English. However, if you're an advanced student of English, I'm sure this book will be useful to you. It's not that difficult to understand. My favorite part of the book is the second part that deals with punctuation rules in detail. The first part deals with grammar, but I actually believe that these grammar rules are not necessarily as difficult for non-native speakers as they are for native speakers. But I think the book in general is quite good, but its main strength is teaching punctuation rules really clearly. And the second book is called The Elements of Style. This is a classic. Millions of people have bought this book in the United States and it's helped them with their writing. It's existed for many years. It's a small book. It's more like a manual that just gives lots of different rules. It's filled with a lot of information that will definitely help you with your writing skills if you're already an advanced learner of English. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.